Okay, now if you'll remember somewhere in the first few videos that I gave, I, I told you that I was a cheerleader and not a guru, and that I'm here to just kind of encourage everybody to jump into spiritual life and to really explore and experiment and uh, have a great time really figuring it all out or finding your way. I remind you of that because today we're going into some beta testing. Now in, at one point in my life I was a programmer and whenever you would do a major upgrade to your program, you wanted people to try it out, but you didn't want the responsibility if it failed. And so you released what was called a beta and you told people, this is for beta testing, try it, but don't put it in your production machine, which means don't count on this advice to get you anywhere. Don't take it as a teaching like, oh, some guy told me, some, some Swami told me this and I've been trying it and you know, I've crashed my, my spiritual life. <laughs> That's not what we want to do here. But I do want to emphasize, I'm just going to share some raw code with you, just some raw thinking today uh, that's going on because of some of the things we've said in the last few days. This idea of everything being mind, we get that. And within mind, we've got a little subset of adjectives or adjuncts or adjunctive ideas about ourself that of course sort of created a little knot in the, in the towel uh, of wholeness. So I was thinking about that, trying to take that out to its nth degree in my meditation. And I was thinking, okay, well, God is not an idea. God is not a concept. If we make a concept of God, if we have an idea of God, we've actually created another little nozzle in the, in the flat dish towel. Do you remember I'm referring to what I talked about yesterday with the dish towel that basically pure mind is just a flat dish towel? And if you poke your finger into the dish towel and then put a rubber band around your finger from the other side and then pull out, you've got a little nipple in the dish towel. And that's an idea. That's ideation. That's like our identity of ourself. Well, if we have an idea of God, we've done the same thing with another finger in another space. We've got a little nipple in our dish towel of pure mind called God. So I started to take some liberties, which was a little scary for me, actually, because I have a very sacred idea of God and I don't often allow myself to poke at it. I'm taking that lid off this week. I'm really going to poke at my ideas of God because I'm trying to suss out where it comes from, how valid it is, and whether I've been completely distorted and off base in my perspectives or not, and to try and see if, uh, if what happens with that. So, okay, where are we going with this? I want you to look at your idea of God and determine where it comes from. It's probably a conglomerate of a lot of different things. A few things you've read in the scriptures and projected onto your idea of God. Probably lots of it is what your parents have told you or what was formed as you were a child. And I think even a lot of it comes from, you know, we take the voice of our parents and sort of attach it to the voice of God in our mind. And we do that quite regularly, and it might not just be the voice of God. It may be the voice of a Swami or a guru or a good friend or just an experience. And we put a lot of these things into our mind as adjectives that describe God, and we relate to that. Okay, and usually that affects our mind space a great deal. What I'm curious about is that if our life is, is within pure mind. If we are living in a mind and not in a world as we've posited before, what is it that makes that world wonderful, miserable, delightful, horrific, but our own set of ideation? And I think a big one of those is our ideation around the divine because we tend to take all of the other little nipples in the dishcloth and relate them to that bigger one that we call the divine or that we relate to as God. So I began thinking, well, how do I determine this? And I went back to the very first thing I said, or not the first thing, second or third thing I said today, where I said that God is not an idea. So God, in reality, is not one of the nipples in the dish towel. God is the whole dish towel. If I want to know God, I can't observe ideas about God. And I think that that is what we were pushing at yesterday when we were looking at Thomas's, Thomas Merton's idea that uh, we want this receptive and aware uh, disposition in meditation. Because we don't want to grab an idea of God and sit in it. We want to be silent, which is to 
fully flatten out the dishcloth, don't have any whirlpools of thinking in there at all, and just open, open to whatever there is. And I mean wide open. Don't hear words, don't hear feelings, don't do any analysis, don't do any wondering. Literally turn yourself into only an ear. An ear never talks back, an ear never says anything or does anything, it just simply receives. So in our meditation or in your practice this week, if you want to upload this beta program of God, uh, attempt this. Remove everything else from your mind. Get rid of this old idea of God that you have. Put it completely aside and lay there or sit there in silence in full receptivity and be. And if you want, if there's something to share, or something that you actually could put into some words, or some curiosities that arise because you did accidentally go into a whirlpool of ideation, uh, feel free to share them. You know, email me or, or uh, leave it in the comments if you don't mind making your spiritual life public for the whole world forever. <laughs> anyway, do some experimenting this week in your relationship with the divine. Poke at your idea of God and see what kind of bees live there. See what's coming out.